We find ourselves preparing for runoff season and the inevitable dig out that we are going to experience with the heavy wet snow. The excavator has been parked here all winter and I haven't started it even once. So I came down here to see if it would start and it wouldn't even crank. My initial thought was that I may need to bring that excavator up here by the house to attempt to dig some of this snow from the back side of the hill and pull it back up the hill farther to make room for all of this snow to come off the roof. Since it wouldn't start, we decided to just get up there with the shovels and get after it anyway. It was starting to sag quite a bit and the bow in the rafters was pretty obvious. I was beginning to get a little bit worried about how much weight was pressing down on top of that roof. We'd had a couple of days of pretty warm temperatures and things were starting to melt pretty good, but we had also had a little bit of rain, and the rain lands on the snow and adds density and weight to that snow that's on the roof. The hillside here behind the house is deceivingly steep. The peak of the house is only about four feet taller than the road surface behind the house. So the main issue that arises when digging out the roof with shovels is the distance you gotta carry that snow to make sure that it's away from the roof and away from the house. You can't simply throw it to the edge of the roof because there's such volume of snow to have to put there that you end up with a 10 foot wall if you stack it at the edge. So you got to carry it uphill far enough that there's room to actually put all of the snow that we're digging off. So after digging for a little while and getting the majority of the weight off of this lean-to roof, I decided it was time to see if we could do any better than this. I went up to get the tractor and a pair of jumper cables to see if we could dig out and jumpstart the excavator and see if there was any way that we could get it up here to reach down and dig some of the snow away from the house. Once I got down there, I knew I needed to take a couple of scoops of snow out of the way to make sure I was close enough for the jumper cables to stretch. When I had tried to start the excavator earlier, it attempted to crank but wouldn't crank fast enough. So I didn't think it would take much of a jump in order for it to start. However, simply connecting the cables still wasn't quite enough. So I needed to let it sit on there for a little while longer. And in the meantime, would try to dig some of the snow off of the cab and along the sides of the cab so that I wouldn't press up against the snow when I tried to rotate. I had asked Everest to go up and grab that yellow handled scoop shovel so that we could do that. While he went up to get the shovel, I checked the connections on the cables and then verified the display on the dash to make sure things were charging. With all the warm weather, he must be doing a little bit of summertime dreaming, as he seems to think that the scoop shovel would make a pretty good paddle for his snow kayak that we call a jet sled. And I can't say as I'd blame him, that looks like a heck of a lot more fun paddling down the hill in the snow versus digging the snow off the roof or digging out equipment. Once we got it started and dug its own way out a little bit, we had to do the hard task of trying to get up the hill now. This snowpack and icy surface makes this excavator want to just slide back down the hill. There's no traction especially with these rubber pads that are on the tracks. It was doing pretty good until this spot. This spot right here, because it steps up around the back of the house, is about a 45 to 50 foot length of road that's steeper than the rest of the road. Right through here, it's about a 14% grade. The rest of the road averages about 10% grade. The wet snow compacts underneath the track and turns almost immediately into an icy layer and then the track just breaks free and slides. So it doesn't want to go anywhere and I have to reach up with the bucket and pull the excavator along the way to get it up. But because the ground is so frozen and icy as well, even that doesn't do very well. So I end up scraping the ice away from the road where my tracks are about to go and then putting a little bit of soft fluffy snow on top to give it something to bite into 
and then I have to reach against the shoulder of the road that's still soft and not frozen to try to get a bite with the bucket. Then I have to try to drive forward while pulling with the boom and stop driving to reposition the boom. It does work most of the time and it's never any fun doing it. Now that I finally made it here, I needed to try to take some of this wet, dense snow and pack it down and pack it into a landing that I could drive out onto to try to get close enough to reach down near the edge of the roof and pull all that snow up and out of the way. I got started where I knew I was clear and then I asked Everest to go down and open up the corner so that I could see the edge boundaries of the roof and know exactly where I needed to make sure and avoid. I wasn't exactly sure how well this was going to work because I knew that the reach of the excavator was such that I couldn't reach to the roof unless I was out on a built up pad. I knew that the excavator weight was going to be a problem if the snow wouldn't compact firm and hard to keep myself from sinking in. So when I started out onto the snowpack, I had to just do it really careful and slow and get a good feel for what was happening. Thankfully, the snow was dense enough that it was compacting really nicely and I could actually get out onto it. Since it was working, I needed to dig everything that I could reach from that point and get it pulled up and out of the way. And then back up, push in another pad next to it and try to move on down the line. I was hoping I could get everything dug away from the edge so that there was a clear line between the edge of the roof and the hillside. This was gonna be my one opportunity to do anything about it. So I really wanted to try to make sure I had enough room between the hillside and the house for all that snow still to come. Ola got home from work just as I was finished up and on my way up to the shop to park the excavator. It's probably a good thing that she wasn't home any sooner because seeing me on the excavator out on a snow ledge probably would have ramped up her anxiety level. But since it was already done by the time she got there, there was nothing to get worked up about. Well, that was a little bit of an ordeal yesterday. We looked at the roof and the snow was pretty bad. It was sagging pretty hard. I was starting to get worried about it being too heavy, especially with the little bit of rain that we got on top of the snow and ice. So I thought we better make an effort to get as much weight off there as we could. So we started shoveling it and we got through a lot of the weight of it at least. And it was just difficult. There was just no, it was so hard to throw it that far uphill to get it past the edge of the roof and to get it to stay uphill so that there was room. And we still had a, a big layer on the main roof of the house that just, that needed to come down and I thought, man, we need to get enough room here to do it. So after we shoveled as much as we could for a while there, we probably got three-fourths of it off the lean-to. Um, then we decided it might be worth it to try to get in there with the excavator and try to dig some of the snow up the hill and pull it up. The problem is I can't reach to the eave of the lean-to from the road surface with the excavator. I've got about a 15 and a half, 16 foot reach with that excavator. And from the road surface down, it's like 20, 22, something like that. There's a couple of spots where I can get fairly close, but not enough to get down into there. So <laughs> I decided that there was enough moisture in the snow and it was dense enough that we could probably pack it down into a bit of a snow ramp and I was just going to try it careful and see what I could do. And it worked. I was able to get a lot of that dug out along the bottom edge and open up the quote unquote snow cave <laughs> effect and got a lot of room for that to come loose. I've got a couple of spots here on the road that I scraped up pretty hard just trying to get the excavator to come up the road. It just wanted to pack into ice underneath it and then just slide all over the place in, in this mostly in this one spot here. So I've got a pretty good pile of snow and ice. And then up there where I came off the road down into the slope, um, it's a pretty good mess there too. So I'm gonna take the bucket, scoop and clean that stuff up real quick. And we'll get a little bit of a 
line of sight on the back of the roof and see how it's looked today. Hopefully that stuff all comes off fairly clean rather than in a fury. The road edge is right here and after that it drops off at a 35 degree angle. You can kind of see up there is the spot that I shelved out to dig out all of that. Most of it's come off. That bit has come down because it was only about six inches down from the eave. So it's moved a foot and a half today. I'm really glad we did get down in here and dig this out and pull as much of it off of there as we could. It was starting to get really worrisome and we ended up with one that split and that is basically dead center. It's the center rafter between these two posts and those two posts are the center of the building. So it's the very, very center of the building addition and that's where it split. So I'll repair that this summer and we'll probably come in here and put another ledger board here and put a tie going up to the center of these to give it a diagonal brace like a truss to help support that. It'll probably be better than trying to go in and add rafters in between. I think I can give it better support by bringing another le ledger and bring a diagonal support into the center. And let's see if I can get up there. Probably can because it's all so hard packed. That's the ice layer by the chimney pipe. All that's going to come down now because it's got room to go. You can see up here is where I was sitting. Back where the road shoulder is, I was a full excavator length out onto the snowpack. You can't really see it well. In this corner of the roof, over here where these branches are, we actually have 
a little, we call it a zigzag trail that comes from here and it comes around through here and ends up up there next to that juniper tree. And I dug all this out deep, it didn't even come near to that trail. So it comes way back there and then it cuts back from that juniper back across here and comes up to the road over here. That's all buried in <laughs> eight feet thickness or so. Cause that trail down here is right about where these branches are, but it's still down another foot or two at least. But now we've got enough room here for all of this to be able to make its way off and come down into here. And I piled it all up there. This is all going to melt. And it's all going to come down and it's all going to come across the floor inside our little covered kitchen. But that's not a big deal to me. The water's just going to run off of there. At worst, it'll be maybe an inch or two deep little puddle here or there where it might be a little less than flat. It's all going to run off and, and it can run off in the form of moisture just fine, but in snow form that's a pain in the butt right now there should be enough room for all this to come off i expect it'll come off in the next day or two this has already moved quite a bit this is just kind of staying put because there's no heat underneath the roof if we had sunlight out that would all come off real fast there's no sunlight hitting this roof and getting that radiant warmth so it's just slowly slowly sliding working its way down but it'll get there. Holy crap. That just came loose from up there and slid all down. Closed in the ice cave again. It's all off the roof, I guess. Um, holy crap. That shook the whole house. I knew that was gonna come off of there. I hoped it would come off slowly like it had been going, but it came off with a fury. I felt the whole dang house move. Whew, that was intimidating. <laughs> wow, it just goes to show you the weight and the force involved in all that. See just how thick some of that ice is that was on in those layers. Some pretty thick chunks of ice in that. That's a lot of weight. This little stretch of road is the same stretch of road that I had come down here with the tractor and dug out for a while, moving that snow, trying to make room for it to run off of the road. I think it's safe to say that spring has finally sprung, and now we're going to need to watch the road conditions and dig off this slush, just like we did the other day. We're going to be pushing this wet, heavy slush off to make sure we don't get our vehicles stuck and buried in it. When you're driving along and you catch a patch of that, it just wants to suck you in and push and pull you all over the road. Even though all of us up here are pretty seasoned off-road drivers by now, the last thing we need to have happen is for one of us to get sucked into a slush pile and stuck on our way home. Or worse yet, get sucked into the snow embankment or drop a tire off the shoulder of the road. The new task for the next couple of weeks will be watching and monitoring the slush buildup and the water to make sure that we clear it where we need to and make sure that it's draining and getting off the road anywhere that we can. Even though it seems like this is a major problem to deal with, it's really just not that problematic. It makes us super excited to see it because we know spring is here and summer's on its way.